So my research pertains to um, a group of three Japanese designers, Rei Kawakubo, Issei Miyake, and Yoji Yamamoto, um, most specifically Rei Kawakubo, and how her work from maybe mid-70s through today um, has been received in a global context, um, some of the criticisms, and I was looking specifically at how the idea of Japanese avant-garde fashion exists in a global context. So she um, was one of the first um, avant-garde designers from Japan to go and exhibit her work in Paris in the 70s. And she, I think, was had a little bit of a rocky start. She was pretty harshly criticized in the beginning for having pretty radical fashion. But at this point, she is one of the most successful, I would say, Japanese fashion designers let alone avant-garde fashion designers, and um, has really spawned quite a few movements and a lot of kind of younger designers look to her for inspiration mm -hmm. from Japan. I kind of saw that it was interesting that Rei Kawakubo was a Japanese woman existing and thriving in the fashion industry, and so I wanted to see how those two kind of big characteristics of her fame um, were incorporated into her work. Mm -hmm. um, one of the tendencies that I kind of looked at in my research was the kind of minimizing or objectifying impacts of labeling these designers as something not just a designer but a female designer or a Japanese designer and how that can kind of imply something about their work that might not necessarily have been their intention um, and Rei Kawakubo was pretty um, adamant about shedding those kind of labels. Sure. It was the collection from spring summer 1997 and I think it had um, upwards of 40 or 50 pieces in the collection and it's quite different from a standard article of clothing, so to, I'll try to do it justice in my description, but it was largely um, these kind of form-fitting dresses with um, either solid or gingham patterns with um, humongous kind of tumorous lumps in non-traditional places on the body, so they were on the shoulders and the lower back and the gut, um, and I think for that very reason, the fact that it was kind of obfuscating the normal silhouette of traditional fashion, it was both um, radical and also somewhat harshly criticized in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you also looked at the collection Broken Brides? That's correct, from 2005, Autumn Winter, which um, kind of starkly contrasted, in my opinion, a lot of what Lumps and Bumps represented in that um, it really was a, I think Lumps and Bumps kind of created something out of nothing, like there was really not much like that that existed prior to Lumps and Bumps, but The Broken Bride um, incorporated a lot of traditional wedding wear elements into the pieces, and so I analyzed um, how kind of a, um, going against the thematic wedding idea in the clothing um, spoke to the bigger, like, overarching gender ideas in her work. In making fashion that qualifies as art, you still have to work within the confines of the kind of commodity-based industry that is fashion, so um, I think it's interesting that fashion designers really can't be too radical or else nobody would buy the clothes and they wouldn't be able to continue producing their art, and um, we've seen in the probably last decade a lot of kind of partnerships between Ray Kawakubo's brand and um, Comme des Garçons and other fashion brands which sometimes has been criticized for a little bit of kind of commodifying her brand and not necessarily pushing the more artistic side of her fashion. Definitely. I've always known I wanted to do an honors thesis just because I think that it really looks good for a graduate school and it's a good kind of practice in really throwing yourself into a pretty specific topic and knowing as much as you can about it, which at William & Mary, as much writing as I've done, I've never really had to do that much research for such a sustained period of time. Uh, I was able to go to Japan to research specifically for the honors thesis uh, through a fellowship from the Charles Center. Um, it got the airfare for me to go and then I kind of made my own plans once I was there. I did a lot of work with some local libraries. I got to use Keio University's library luckily since I was an alumni and then had a little bit of difficulty but eventually was able to work at the Bunka Fashion Institute's library. They had a lot of really relevant materials for me. Um, and then I also got to speak with um, just, I did some interviews on the street of people who were either wearing Comme des Garçons or people in the stores, and then I also was really interested in tracing some of the, like, techniques that I'd seen in 
Clone Garçon and other major Japanese fashion brands to the crafts that kind of inspired them. Well, I would love to um, be able to continue the research and hopefully um, build a little bit more on the um, kind of intersectionality of gender and power and heritage and break down a little bit more of like what kind of per pushed Rei Kawakubo into this work and maybe look at her contemporaries a little bit more as well. Do you think you'll get a chance to meet Rei Kawakubo? Um, if I am the luckiest person in the world, I might get a chance to meet her, I'd be a dream come true.